Hello guys, welcome back to my podcast. So this time it'll be less awkward because I today have a very special guest, my first ever guest on my podcast, Mr. Fuad Hazim. Fuad, say hi. Hello. I barely have any viewers, so it's okay. It's <laughs> comfortable and stuff. So what are you up to? Uh, not much. Uh, I'm just like sleeping. I don't know. <laughs> I thought you said you were studying. That's why you're not uh, in school. I was. I was studying. Uh-huh. Then I got tired. So. Yeah. Are you? Not? Yeah. 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 I'm no. I'm just oh. joking. I'm just. <laughs> Okay, for a second I was so shook because I'm like not ready and Mark is on Monday. Yeah. Crap, it's on Monday. <laughs> and we have like 90 studies to remember, so. I don't yes. think I can do it. Honestly, I don't think, I don't, I don't, I really don't think I can do it. Hey, you haven't tried it yet. Do not give up. That's, that's, okay. We're, we're supposed to be talking about pet peeves and I think that's right. one of my pet peeves. Okay. <laughs> Give up, <laughs> but I have already given up. <laughs> so, if you have like a pet peeve that that annoys you so much that you just want to tell people to stop doing it, that annoys me so much is that. What what does it what does annoy me? Hmm. Uh, it's like when when people like drive and then they just like. You know, they just, like, just break straight away for oh. no fucking reason. Yeah, I hate, I hate that. <laughs> for me, it's, like, same, but, like, they don't signal. You know Bruneians, right? Uh-huh. Oh, maybe not Bruneians. Maybe just people who drive in Brunei in general. They have, like, obese fingers or something. <laughs> they yeah. can't move the finger to slightly click the, the, I mean, like, move the signal signal lever thing. Yeah, it's, re- it's, it's really that annoying. You're- all right, like tell me, please. I am. Oh, it it annoys me so much. It makes me anxious. <laughs> That's why I hate it when people are driving in front of me. I also hate it when people drive in behind me. But like in front of me, like I I wish it was just clear all the way, you know. Yeah, yeah. Basic basically, we just hate drivers pretty much. Yeah, I I prefer the road all to myself. That's why I love driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any any other pet peeves you have? Of course, I have so much. I guess um, being like in school kind of changed my perspective on things and everything just makes me angry and anxious and yeah, I'm never normal these days. <laughs> what do you mean? What, 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 what do you think made you change? I think before yeah. I was more like laid back. Like, I'm like, oh, I don't care or whatever. And now I'm just like every single thing. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, one of the pet peeves that I had when I was very young, since I was very young, Mm -hmm. is my mom leaving the door unclosed. Oh, yes. I mean, my parents still do that until now. What do you do when they do that? I just just shut up and close the door. (laughs) For for me, like, I get so angry. Like, my mom would open the door, tell me something, and she just leaves the door open, and then she... And then I'm... (laughs) The door! I would scream at her. And if she doesn't come back to close the door, I would like stand up and slam the door shut. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it's like you're mad every time she does that? Yeah, because it just it annoys me. But then now they don't do it anymore because they know I get mad and I start screaming. So they, <laughs> like, they close it. If they don't close it properly, I would scream and then they would come back and close it. <laughs> right. You must have more. I mean, you're very chill, so I can't imagine. Yeah, exactly. I can't think of any other pet peeves I have. How about, like, people chewing with their mouth open? No, I don't mind that. Sometimes it's just, like, the way you eat. That's how I see it. Mm, I, I don't really mind that either. Cause yeah. I mean, I can't be too hypocritical. I think sometimes I may eat with my mouth open. I don't think I do. But, yeah, I don't really care. Yeah, some, I, I, I'm pretty sure, like, all of us would subconsciously eat with our mouths open at times yeah yeah mm, how about any anything that you that what annoys you really what annoys what what annoys me well 
not much annoys me because like I I just don't like to be stressed really. <laughs> so I prefer to live a stress free life. But is your life stress free? I mean, not really. But like, like for me, when it when things start to get stressful, I just like step back from it a bit, and then like uh-huh. if I have to come back to it, then I'll come back to it after I'm I feel alright. That's nice. That's a really nice mindset to have. I don't. I can't. I, I can't. I'm basically just stressed overall. I just. I don't look stressed, but I am. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure like a lot of A level students are stressed. Oh yeah, yeah. I think we are. We it's just A level sucks. Why yeah. do we have to? Oh. Why did we anyway. even take A levels though? Yeah, I was thinking that too. I was like, I regret it so much. I should have just gotten to. Gotten foundation, not exactly. gotten foundation. Did foundation, or like, oh well, we are here. We have to get get it done and over with anyway. Yeah, it's like a few more months, and then we're kind of free. For a few months. For a few months, yeah. You need unless you're taking a gap year. Sorry, what 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 was that? Unless you're taking a gap year. Oh yeah. Um, moving on. Um, what other pet peeves? Not nothing. You're just so chill. That must be nice. I don't know. I mean, I'm not usually annoyed with a lot of things. Hmm. How about when? Uh, okay, I have this one, where people don't do their research before doing something. Like, let's say, they're going, they're traveling, uh-huh. and then they go to the airport, but then they have a bottle inside their bag. Right. And then you can't. Do you know? Do you know this that you can't bring water into the Final security, like before yeah. you get on. Pay, you it's only have... like a s- certain uh, milliliter yeah. that you can bring. Yeah, that's the thing. And then they're like, they they hold up the entire line because they have a big damn bottle. Yeah. In their and the security is like, oh, can you open this and this and that? And I'm like, oh my god, do your research, like please, like if you can't bring knives on board, don't bring your knife on board. Uh-huh, I mean, like, yeah. I actually don't bring knives, but like you know, you get what I mean. If you can't, you, you know, should it, board. that actually happened to me once. I. It's a funny story actually because I have this like keychain, mm-hmm. like from Final Fantasy, mm-hmm. and it's like a sword, right? And then for some reason, the uh, the security just like was like trying to look for it. Like I didn't I didn't even know where it was, and I didn't even know that it was in my bag. But mm-hmm. they were searching for it all over my bag, and it was like deep inside my bag. So, like it was it took like a good. 20 to 30 minutes for them trying to find and like there was a lot of people behind uh-huh. so like I don't know they just took my keychain I, I don't know it was like, I think it was like really stupid but I guess I can understand why they took it actually that happened to my sister too oh she had like yeah one of those keychains but the funny thing is uh, we went like we went from I think it was to no I think it was to India and for India it I have to take two flights to there. I have to go to KL first, then KL to India like that. Uh-huh. So we went, nothing really happened. But when we came back, I think on our first flight, they it was exactly like you said. It's like a sword kind of thing, kind of keychain. Uh-huh. Yeah, that that was confiscated. Like they're like, oh, there's like a weapon in your bag. Open it, and then they took it out and then threw it away. And my sister, it was one of her, I think one of her, she she took that everywhere. So I assume it was her favorite or something. Oh, yeah, that's they nice. had. It and we had to leave without it, which is which is weird because the first two times it was okay, and our third flight during the trip is when they they took it away. Oh, huh. maybe it depends on the security or something. I don't know. Yeah, probably. I think yeah. some are more uh, lenient than others, but yeah, I understand why they would do that too. Yeah. What if it's an actual weapon, right? Yeah, that's true. Mm. Actually, going back to your point just now, something about people not preparing. Mm-hmm. I guess I kind of some sometimes well not actually most of all the time actually I'm annoyed if like in a group project like this this has to be this this one person that just doesn't do anything so like you have to do everything yourself uh huh yeah it's, I I hate that me too um so in uh, let me not say which class but basically in this class we we. You know this too. We are given a lot of group work, uh-huh. like be like oh, in a in a group, do this like that. Yeah. And there's three of us, right? And this one person in my group does absolutely nothing. When I mean nothing, it's just basically 
our teacher telling us to think of ideas uh-huh. or like things or something and then i would i would like okay guys okay this 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 and then i would look at look to my left my friend uh-huh. and i'm like tell me things like oh this 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 and i would look to my right to my other friend and be like do you have any idea and she'd be like no <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> I think it's just, uh, so sister's uh, like uh uh no <laughs> It just kind of, you know, it annoys me a little. Like, come on, come on. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it, it's fine, I guess. But sometimes it just irks me a little. Yeah. Mm, what else? What else? Like these, you see now. You, now that we're talking about it, more and more pet peeves are coming up. What <laughs> Those are two so far, by the way. Mm. Uh, I don't like it when people don't say thank you when you do something. Like you hold the door for them and they uh-huh. just walk and leave. Oh, you and you don't like that? Uh, what I mean, like I'm holding the door for you. I don't have to hold the door for you, but I'm doing it. Yeah. And you should at least like smile, say say thank you, whichever. Don't just yeah. like, you know, just walk as if you're the I'm the doorman. <laughs> I mean, I guess I can understand where you're coming from, but. Like when it comes to like, I don't know if this is the same for like other countries, but what I notice in Brunei, it's, it's ki- that's kind of a normal thing where you open the door for them and they just they just walk by, like it's nothing. But, 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 but. Okay, if in in the public, okay, whatever I guess, but how about in school? Like let's say the SER door, I open it for you and you can at least say thank you. I mean, I do that for a lot of people actually. I mean, they do say thank you, which is, which is nice. Yeah, which is nice. Uh, people who do say thank you, I, I, I'm like, yeah, you nice. Yeah. But at times I'm just like, hey, especially if people I don't know, like I, I hold the door open for you, the, open for you, eh, open for <laughs> you. And the least you could do is at least give me a smile. Don't make me feel like I did a good deed for nothing. I mean, um, I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't want anything in return, but like a smile would have been nice, you know. Yeah, yeah, I get you. And so that's why. I don't want I, I always I don't want other people to feel like that so whenever the whenever someone pulls the door open for me I'd be like thank you like really loudly because I'm nice huh <laughs> okay since you don't have much pet peeves anyway what about things that gives you like anxiety or like paranoia anxiety you know like I think I I don't know what anxiety means Mm-hmm. Let me let me look it up. For a bit. Okay. Anxiety meaning feeling of worry. Oh, okay. What? Well, if what, you're what? talking about anxiety, it's mostly like performing in front of people. Mm. Yeah, most most of the time. I mean, so I can I can talk in front of people. Like I don't mind. Sorry, what was that? So you're ner- you when performing in front of people, you're nervous and anxious. Yeah, so, very. Yeah. You know, because I was like, I was on. Uh, you know, do you know Omegle? Yeah. Yeah, I was I was on Omegle for like, uh, two hours today. And like, I was just trying to, you know, just sing in front of people, mm-hmm. like, I didn't even show my face or anything, but I was still like so nervous and stuff. So I I don't know I mean I guess it's just like I'm afraid that people wouldn't like it they wouldn't mm-hmm. enjoy it so yeah I mean I get you like even before we started the cast I was like oh no oh no like it just kind of creeps up at, like in my back being like ooh <laughs> so it <laughs> makes me a little nervous yeah and when I first started my first my first trailer episode i i think i recorded it like three times before being satisfied with it because i saw it so anxious and i the more anxious i am the more i trip over my words i mean right. i trip my words in general but then the more nervous i am i'm like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> i mean i guess it's normal for everyone to trip over their words my i, I know i used to be such a good english speaker like i used to be like like flowing water but for some reason i think it started last year where sometimes i'm talking and i miss my word like i would trip over my word 
Huh. And I don't know why. And I really don't know why. Like I sometimes I can't pronounce a word, so I would be like, uh, I would say the word, and if I don't say it right, I'll be like, blah, 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 like that. <laughs> yeah, I do that too, actually. I don't know why some, something is wrong with me. Something is wrongly hardwired into my brain ever since <laughs> bubbles. I swear. Uh, is, is it maybe because like you've been talking to a lot of Malay people, like compared to before? But I was in Samja before, and that's a government school, and that's there's a lot of Malays there, and I spoke a lot of Malay there too. Huh. Okay. I don't, I really I honestly don't I can't think of a reason why that happened. It just it just happened. Yeah. And suddenly yeah, I'm no longer a, a proper English speaker. I just I sound so broken. <laughs> <clears throat> You know what makes me the most anxious? What? Being late. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how people do it. I hate, like, let's say I have to be, be at school at 8. Uh -huh. Usually I take an hour to get ready. And let's say I should, like, it, normally I would, it should be that I wake up at 7 and get ready. And then leave at, like, 7.45 and get to school at 8. Uh -huh. Okay, I sleep, I sleep now. I wake up at 7. But then I would be, I would be up at five thirty. I'm like, oh, I have to go to school. I have to go to school. I have to go to school. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like so scared that I would be late. I mean, in a way, that's good because like you're, you always want to be early, you know. That's true, but it it also like affects my mental health in a way. Yeah, like, yeah, that's true. I'm always so anxious, and like, if if let's say I went, I left my house a few minutes late, and I reach school at like 7.59 or 7.58, it makes me so anxious that like I'll be running to class. I mean, that's considered late, actually. What do you mean? Like, because like, we have to be in school like at 7.45. No, I'm not, I'm not saying like, the actual time, like, oh. let's say extra class starts at 8, you right, know what right. I mean? Yeah. Like, late in general, if I have an appointment at this time, I have to be there like, just give me some kind of weird anxiety, it it just plays with my brain. Like I don't I have no idea why. I try to figure out why but I can't. And it gives, it's like it's like it, it's like a type of paranoia or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Have you tried like, you know, research about it or something? I should speak yeah. this. Yeah, but I haven't because I've had it since I was very young. I always like to go to things early. And I, what if my parents say, "Get ready at two thirty, we're going out." I would be like, "Done, ready, sitting with sitting with my budget and everything, like the up at two thirty." And then you know what would happen? My parents would be taking a nap, waking up at two thirty to go out. <laughs> well, I'm just like all wow. dressed, there sitting, waiting. And then we would be going out at like three thirty. <laughs> I mean, I I can't relate to that though, because my my parents would always. Ask me to finish early. My parents are the one that's late. My family, my entire family. I don't know. Um, since yeah, I don't, I don't really remember about him. But my, my, my parents and my two siblings. Yeah, they're. I swear they don't know how to look at a damn clock, especially my little brother. But you, they don't know how to read a clock. Not read a clock. I mean, they do, but they don't know how to use it. I mean, the reason why we have it is so that we are on time, you know? Uh, uh, okay, I get you. All right. <laughs> he's, he's, he gives me he gives me high, high blood pressure every morning. Your brother? Yeah, my little brother. Because um, we're supposed to leave uh, our house at 6.30. My mm -hmm. driver, he, he sends us to school and he goes for other work that my dad has assigned him to do. Yeah. 6.30 is our time that we have to leave. And my brother would still be sleeping until 6.20. And I would have to scream at him to wake up, wake up, wake up. Because he's just so lazy. And he doesn't he doesn't even rush. What I mean is like, he knows he's late. But he, he's not rushing so that he doesn't have to make other people late. He just doesn't care. Does, does, your, does your dad talk about it to him or something? Because that's not a good thing to have. Yeah. And my parents do like wake him up. Like we we shout at him. I it's mostly me shouting at him, uh -huh. and uh, then my mom would be like, "Hey, wake up, wake up!" Like she would do too, but he still doesn't. He he doesn't he doesn't get it. 
I don't think he cares. I don't think he'll be ever be on time on, with anything. I mean, you never know. He might change, you know. Change. Can we look at <laughs> 12 he should be changing right about now <laughs> hey some 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 of us are late bloomers right well, I, I really hope he is no i <laughs> i really hope he changes soon i was gonna say i hope he's a late bloomer but i don't want him to be a late bloomer <laughs> <laughs> um so what about you what others what other anxiety i'm tripping over my anxiety inducing activities anxiety oh uh what's it called like something anything that has to do with heights you're scared of heights yes very what is the highest you've been to like which height what's the highest building you've been on um uh what's the highest building i i can't remember but uh about uh 20 floors above did that scare you i mean not really because I, I i was in a hotel so it's like i was just looking out the window so what how what do you mean by height like, like immediate place as in like uh let's say you're on a rooftop that scares you yeah it's like if i don't have any any like sort of thing in front of me for me to hold on to mm -hmm. or to prevent me from like falling yeah that's that's what i start but that's when the fear starts to kick in oh i mean i i find i'm the opposite i actually in heights you sorry what what was that thrill thrill i find thrill in heights really like if if i have a chance to go uh to a very tall place i would i would take my chance it's like like aren't you scared of the like possibility of you know, falling. Yeah, that's the that's where the fun part comes in. Are like, you serious? Fall or not? I'm just like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> You're um, crazy. In I think in two thousand, I don't know if it was two thousand fourteen, two thousand sixteen, but we went to China, and there was um, if I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was like two hundred meters tall, which is pretty tall. It was like up in the clouds, mm -hmm. and it was actually it was winter time, so it it makes sense up in the clouds because the clouds are lower. Right. Um. So we went up there, and then they have this um. Oh, what do they call it? I'm not sure what they call it, but but basically it's clear glass, and you can walk on top of the clear glass. Oh, that's so. Nice. We went there, and but you have to walk on top of it. You have to pay, you know, because it's like a special thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I want to go on it. I want to go on it. It was so fun. I was scared, of course, but it was fun still. Really? I feel my heart beating, you know, this, I like the adrenaline rush and stuff. Uh, yeah, stuff. I mean, I can understand the adrenaline. But like, like, don't you have like a thought in the back of your mind? Like, what if the glass breaks or something, you know? That's the thing. Like I said, I do think that I'm like, oh, what if it breaks? And what if so like that makes you want to go more? I, I guess. I mean, that's my motivation to feel the wow. adrenaline rush. That's interesting. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people can relate to what I'm saying. I, there's a lot of people who are like, find yeah. uh, in heights. But what if like, let's say, um, let's say the glass did break. So like, ha like what, what would happen then? You know, I would die, obviously. Exactly. Like, you know, it, like thinking about death, it's scary. It's there, okay. What was that? If my time to die comes, then what can I do about it? I can't stop it. <laughs> I mean, it can be like, you know, Final Destination. You can delay your death or something. Who knows? Oh, Final Destination is one of those movies that I can't handle. Why? The, the, you you can handle heights, but not Final Destination? Final Destination is different. They they die in specific ways. And... <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. Uh, I, I enjoy watching it for some reason. I, 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 so I remember this one time. I had a final decision in my pen drive, and I was like, oh, I, I want to watch it, I want to watch it. And so I did, but uh -huh. I fast-forwarded it. I, I literally watched it on fast-forward. Like everything? Like the whole movie? I mean, I if there was a scene where they talked a lot, I uh -huh. would I would uh, listen to it. But then right. if the death part, especially, I would like, I just fast-forwarded it. Like, it just makes me so anxious. So... I think 
searching for. You're you're just you're just basically watching the movie for the talking. Yeah, basically. Right. You know why? I think I was. I really don't know what age. Maybe eight. Maybe nine. Or maybe younger. Um, we were we watched Final Destination, and. I, maybe it was number two or something but basically this lady she went into a lift uh-huh. for some reason there's a dude I don't know if I'm describing this right but this is what I remember this dude like clamped on her like she he clamped on her ponytail uh-huh. and she was trying to run away or something and then what happened was what happened was basically what happened <laughs> oh my god thinking about it just gives me anxiety <laughs> But was, her head was stuck inside the elevator and her body out and the door shut. Ow. And then the elevator moved. Ow. It moved out. So you can imagine what I'm trying to say here. Yeah, yeah. So her, yeah, and then she died. And then I remember after watching that movie, I was so, so, so scared of elevators. For <laughs> Like we went out to KK and Nakel and there's, you know, we go to hotels, elevators. Yeah. And, and like, I would be the first to get in. <laughs> and the first, because I was so scared of the door. <laughs> and like, if I was near the button, I would hold the open door button uh-huh. whenever the door opens. I'm like, open. <laughs> <laughs> so I was so scared. I remember it. I remember we went to KK and I was so scared of it. <laughs> and then I grew out of it, of course. I'm, I'm more careful now. Right, not a... yeah. yeah, but those kind of things still scares me. Like, because it's so detailed how they die. Well, I guess that's, uh, that's and it's fair. Because those things can happen to you. I mean... I mean, not the elevator part, but like, um, which final decision was that? Uh, where the girl, she was, in the, she was doing gymnas- gym- oh, yeah, gymnastics. Oh, yeah, gymnastics. And she broke her neck. Yeah, she broke, she broke, she basically broke everything, really. Yeah, the, yeah, that <laughs> Let's say I'm like walking wrong and like fell down the stairs. I can break my neck and die. Yeah. And that that doesn't give me thrill. That gives me anxiety. Whereas heights gives me thrill. Gives you thrill. Okay. That's good to know. No, it's not good to know. That means you're gonna kill me by like weird. weird... <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you wanted to talk about something on my podcast. What is it? Well. It's like something that I've been thinking about, like life in general. Because mm-hmm. like I was, I was literally thinking about this yesterday. That uh, like, um, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say any names, but like, there's this person. It's mm-hmm. like, he's told me that I'm too young. <coughs> I, I, I don't know what life is yet, you know. Mm-hmm. But I thought like, if. If if I'm too young and I'm not I don't I shouldn't or yeah I'm too young to know what life is. It's like mm-hmm. do do they really know what life is as well? You know, because like Actually, that's true. I relate to that too. Yeah, because like if if you think about it, like we go through like different experiences, mm-hmm. and I think from our different experiences as individuals we would define life very very differently you know yeah exactly oh my god yeah continue and i have something to say about this yeah i mean basically that's like the whole thing really and then like just my mind just blabbers on just it just repeats itself pretty much but yeah that's basically it what i'll add something later um so usually when i'm in the car Mm -hmm. like dad like he would stop giving me like lectures or he would say something and he, every single time, every, I swear, I feel like every talk he gives me, there's always that one phrase that he says, oh, I know better because I have experience. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I get what he's trying to say. Like, I really do. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, our experiences are different. Uh, yeah. What we went through, he said, oh, I passed your age, so I know what it, how it feels. But the thing is, yes, he passed my age, but he didn't live his 19, like I'm 19, right? So he didn't live his age 19 in 2019 you get what i mean yeah i get you so like he can't just say oh i know how it feels like i'm like no you don't you didn't you, you're not 19 right now yeah you're, because you're... it's like he I'm lived li- in a different generation you know so it's like yeah. 
things are different now. And especially when teachers like say like, oh, uh, I my in my generation when I was in school it was like this 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 I'm like, yes, nice miss, but you don't have to compare us, <laughs> sir, miss, whoever is saying it. I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. We live different lives. We handle things differently, and sometimes like even if you have a lot of experience, doesn't mean you know what life is. Yeah, it's true. I'm, I can't say I know what life is, but you can't say that either. Yeah. Because of our of our different lives lives. Yeah. And which is it kind of really irks me to the I'm like, it just really does because my dad brings it up every time, and I just listen to him, and I don't say anything. I just you, like oh, you, yeah, you don't yeah, want to yeah. say anything, or you don't dare. I not that I don't dare is because if I like my dad doesn't he's not he's not a listener he's a talker. Right. Okay. <laughs> They honestly don't listen to what I have to say. Right, right. Then they do, but then they will just go back to their original point. Uh-huh. So I don't cry yeah. anymore. Okay? So like, yeah, like I, I, I get, I get what you mean. Life. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not better. No one is better just because you're older doesn't mean you're wiser. Exactly. Also, some people, think- some people are like, they, they think that, you know, they know so much and. Like just because they have like study until like masters or whatever, it's like they think that they're good or they know a lot of things. But sometimes even people who are just working a uh, like in labor, for example, sometimes mm-hmm. they have more knowledge than you. I mean, not probably not the same knowledge, but like maybe in terms of uh, quote unquote life knowledge, maybe the laborers would know more about it. You know, if, if, if that's the thing that we don't sense. know what what people know, we don't know what. People have been through. Yeah. Maybe when people are like, "Oh, I know better," and like, sometimes my dad says, "Like, oh, you haven't lived your life yet." I'm like, huh, "I'm living right now." <laughs> I mean, sometimes like if they if they say to live your life, like how how exactly are we gonna live our lives if we're just stuck in a cage? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh God, you want to talk about this? I feel like I'm in a cage all. Exactly. You know, I don't really have a life outside. Basically, school, home. That's all I can do. I can't really go out, and so I'm always in a cage. And this brings me to my next point, which is which we talked about anxiety. And I have this. I have like some kind of anxiety talking to people, which is weird because I'm also I'm social, but also talking to people gives me a lot of stress. Huh. It's people I don't know is what I mean. Explain. Um, so, like, I'm I, generally I'm not allowed to go out. Like, I can't I can't go out with my friends or whatnot. Uh-huh. My life is restricted restricted to going to school and coming back home, and I'm on the internet. Mm-hmm. That's it. And and because I I think it's because of that I'm I develop some kind of anxiety when pe- meeting people I don't know. Right. Like okay. we're talking about like this one time we went to coaching coaching. Oh. Anyways, it was somewhere else. And my dad told me to call the hotel because the internet connection was so bad and mm-hmm. we couldn't go online. And see, so he told me to call the hotel to ask if we have if we can get a room, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Like that. And then uh, he was like, oh, why don't you want to do it? Like I got scolded because I couldn't talk on the phone. But I ended up talking on the phone, but I was so anxious. And like, I started like fidgeting and like shaking. Like that's what happens when I talk to people on the phone, people I don't know. Right. I avoid it as much as possible. So yeah, that's what happens. And this is because I, I don't have a chance to go out. Like, let's say I'm going out to the mall. Mm-hmm. Like, I would at least talk to a cashier, you know? Yeah. That's like, that's that's my my um, practice with people that I don't know that. Like, I should have that, but I don't have that. And it gives me anxiety, but I, mm-hmm. what's the word, shunned because of my anxiety. I see. Wait, and you, you talk to cashiers or something? What? You talk to cashiers? I mean, like, what I mean by cashiers, like, you know, you talk, like, like, you ask, let's say you're going to the mall or you're buying the movie ticket, you like, you have to talk to them, you know? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. I get you. I thought it's like, I thought you meant like a conversation with them. Oh, not really. I'm just like talking like just a few words in general. Right. And my mom, that one time, she, she, she did this thing. We went to a restaurant to buy nasi katok. And what I had my little brother with me, 
and I told my little brother to go and talk to the cashier because I didn't want to talk to them because I was anxious. Mm-hmm. Like just I was like scared, so I was like, oh, uh, Ismail, go talk to the person by Tuna Sika Talks like that. And so when we came back to the car, my brother told my mom that, oh, look, actually, I'm so scared. She saw. She told me to talk to the cashier, and my, you know what my mom said? What? I was like, oh, if the cashier was a guy, she would have she would have talked to. <laughs> she literally slut shaped me. <laughs> What? That's not even true. I'm just, it just, it, it like, it, it, it made me so sad that uh-huh. they don't understand these kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was so angry about it too. I'm like, oh, and it's just yeah, yeah. I'm just, and I, I like going out with my friend. My friend, I feel like she knows that I get anxious. So whenever I'm like, oh, I think I want to buy that. Like, I want that. And then she would just go and do it for me because she knows I get anxious. Hmm. And I would just, I just wish my parents would like understand that, you know, if they don't want me to be like that, they should give me a chance to like go out and yeah, be more social. Like, yeah, school that's, is- that's kind of the problem with like strict parents. Mm-hmm. We, we, they like, they tend to just, you know, restrict us from doing pretty much everything. Mm-hmm. And then like they expect us to be this way, but how are we going to be like this way if you don't let us free? I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, true, 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 true. Like, there's a certain, um, what's like a, uh, skill that need that you that requires you to go out and do things, but they don't give you the freedom to do that. Mm-hmm. So, but they still want you to have that skill. Yeah. And you're just like, how, how, how? So yeah, like my my life is pretty much like that. They're like, oh, you should do this, do that. I'm like, how am I supposed to do it if I don't if I can't do it? Yeah, well, like, I don't know. I just, I I just hope that like, you know, since like you grew up with this kind of, like like how you're raised right now, this is how you grew up. Mm-hmm. I just I just hope that this is not how you're gonna raise how you're gonna raise your kids in the future. You know. I'm scared of that. That's why, like, I tried not to. It's a, it sounds really bad, but I try. I try. I, that's why I stay in my room. That's all I do. I just stay in my room. I go out with it and come back. Right. I play my cat, and that's it. I because I'm so. I'm. This is one of the things that I. It honestly really really bugs me that I'm scared that I will do that to my children, and because mm-hmm. of that, I'm thinking like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have children. <laughs> no, that's too much. Yes, this issue is. I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from, but yeah. Life sucks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it does, yeah. So anyway, like, coming back to the cashier thing, actually. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, when when I was in UK, mm-hmm. it's like the cashiers, right? They would, like, be really friendly and stuff. And, like, they would just make conversation with the customers. Uh-huh. No, but like when it comes to here in Brunei, it's like they just they're just like quiet. Sometimes their face much like a marong and all that. True. It's like sometimes like does it, is it hard to give a smile? You know, at least if you're not gonna talk to us. I I usually smile at them and they would smile back. Usually it's forced, but I appreciate your. Hmm. I mean that's good, I guess. But like I want to see like the. Is the cashier who initiates the smile or conversation, you know? I think... I think it's because, you know, Brian people in general are very hard to handle. Sorry, hard to what? Handle, like, some people are fussy. fussy. Oh, yeah. They might be out of their mood, like, not in the mood or something. But so far... They can't be not in the mood for, like, forever. (laughs) Well, I maybe haven't met the right cashier yeah well i mean i don't go out much so it's like i don't know the most i've been to is like Huaho, and usually i'll be like i don't sometimes i don't say anything either put my stuff i give them my car my cash and i get the receipt i smile at them and then i leave like i don't even look if they smile back or not <laughs> so yeah it depends i guess mm-hmm. I just tell myself that if I if I do nice things, like if I smile at people, they would smile back. So I just right. keep doing it so that, you know, karma will take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. I try to be nice so that nice things will come back to me. I like your style. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Like, um, do you have anything else about like related to life? Life, yeah. life. I have a lot of things related to life. You want anything you not, want to talk about in particular? So deep and like so long. So I'd rather not about it now. Maybe in a future part. Right. But like we're nineteen. It's true that we don't know much about life. We know enough to make us make us stressed. <laughs> You just have to live through it, and you know, and just make sure that you don't tell your future kids or whoever that's younger than you. Don't tell them, oh, you don't know anything about life. Yeah. yeah and so yeah, it is. Just... Yeah, life, 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 life is just. Ugh. And just, whenever I think about it, it just it just makes me go. It's just see, I can't even speak. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because you're talking too fast. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Um. Listeners, if you if you want if you want a tip, if you think I'm speaking too fast, you can always click on the speed and click make it slower. You can make it slower or faster, depending on what you want. You can do that so that you can understand what I'm saying. So like you'll sound like, "Hello, guys, welcome to." <laughs> Why are you exaggerating? <laughs> I don't know. You can just. Uh, lower it down to zero point seven five. I think then I would sound not like right now. I don't think I'm speaking too fast right now. Yeah, right now you know you're not speaking too fast. So yeah, if you slow down the podcast, I would sound normal. Then right, like right now because I'm speaking too fast. I just grew up with the speaking thing. It's okay. They, my podcast, my podcast listeners will understand. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's all the time we have for this podcast. So, what you wanna insert your like Instagram or whatever so that people can follow you? Uh, my Instagram is Fuad Hirwan. F U A D H I R W A N. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's I I. That's pretty much the same for all my platforms. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Whatever Snapchat, you know, you think about it. It's, like, it's yeah, all the same. Yeah, yeah, YouTube channel too. You guys should check it out. Just, I just haven't search. posted for a year, but it's fine. So it's okay. They can just um give you views for your past videos. <laughs> um, anything else you want to say to our lovely listeners? Uh, anything else I want to say? Uh, for now I'm just gonna say, uh, live your life, speak your, th- speak your truth, and uh, don't waste your time. Like us, both of us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's it. <laughs> right, yeah, I agree with him. <laughs> so thank you guys for listening. Um I'll catch you on my next podcast. I don't know when it's gonna be since exam is coming up soon, but soon, I hope, with a different uh what's the word? Guest, right? Guest, different guest. <laughs> <laughs> so bye guys. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.